move, said the great white father. There are many, so many hungry wolves. Can you find the wolves in this picture? picture from acclaimed director Martin Scorsese the mastermind behind films like Goodfellas and The Departed comes his highly anticipated and highly praised Killers of the Flower Moon Scorsese shines the spotlight on a dark and often overlooked chapter in American history the reign of terror that engulfed members of the Osage Nation in the 1920s told through an improbable romance and unspeakable betrayal starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Lily Gladstone, and Robert De Niro, Killers of the Flower Moon tracks the Osage's ill-fated encounter with sudden wealth after oil is discovered on their land. But as their wealth grew, so did a sinister conspiracy resulting in a series of suspicious murders that would later shock the nation. And now uh, let's bring in the legendary director himself, Martin Scorsese. Martin, thank you so much for being with us today. We so greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. We had the opportunity to talk before you went to Oklahoma. You were talking about this movie you were going to make, but when you got there between COVID and Robert De Niro's broken leg and a lot of other problems, this, this had to be a, a, just a pretty incredible challenge for you to make this movie, and yet... It has just uh, it's 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 just turned out to be a masterpiece. Talk about how rewarding this must be. Well, obviously, it really is. I mean, I it has taken over six years to pull it together. Um, granted, two of those years I was making Irishman, uh, Eric Roth and I working on the script simultaneously, all of this. So to see the result this way, to see people react to it this way is is really a blessing. You said you wanted to stay as true to the Osage history as possible, which meant actually learning their language. I just, I just want our viewers uh, to see a scene of Molly Kyle, played by Lily Gladstone. Ext just an extraordinary acting job by her. But here, she's gossiping to her sisters over the handsome coyote, Ernest Burkhart, uh, played by Leonardo DiCaprio. Let's take a look. <laughs> After seeing the movie, I didn't have to read uh, articles telling me uh, that, that you actually had Osage actors in there. It was obvious watching uh, that, that this was so so natural to everybody. I mean, talk about how important it was uh, for you to get to get it right, to be authentic. Well, again, the thing, authenticity is one thing, but you had to really um, live with the Osage, in a sense, so that, as I say, it's all about trust. And knowing that if you, you know, we had Marianne Bauer, who was our uh, associate, one of our associate producers, she is very much involved with being a connection between ourselves and all the key figures in the Osage community, one on costumes, one on culture, one on, one on language, uh, actually, because the Osage language, we stamped it out. We destroyed it. They don't really know. Uh, very few people know. And it's being put back together um, by the younger generation. And they taught 
Lily, and they taught the, uh, the, the women in the film that you just saw. Um, the improvisation, for example, where uh, she says something to Leo when driving the car, and um, he says, I don't know what you said, but it must be uh, Indian for a handsome devil. That was an improv, and you see her laugh <laughs> in reality. And right there, right there, is, right there is, the, is, is, the, is the very, very um, nature of their relationship as actors. They just trusted each other. I wonder why it is that for a lot of Americans, like me, even though I, I studied history uh, most of my life, my exposure to it has been through, uh, I buried my heart at Wounded Knee and this movie and other pop cultural uh, uh, moments, landmarks, uh, but we don't really teach this history so much. Is, is that one of the reasons why you thought this was such an important story to tell? New generations have become inured to this sort of thing. You do a film about a tragedy and they'll look at it and they'll say, oh, that's too bad. Well, that's over with, you know, and they forget about it. And it's almost like doing, uh, it's like an obligation to see the film or experience it. This I thought, if we do it through the people, if you actually identify with uh, Molly, let's say, and her sisters, and uh, it even identify with Ernest and Bill, uh, uh, the earnest, his weakness as a character is it's not even a courage, not even a lack of courage. He does. He's just a very weak man who's delusional at this point. Is he really? How much did he really know? And when did he know it? You know, um, about what he was doing with her and with Bill. I mean, this is about marriage. This is about love. Uh, and, and so the corruption could, could, could affect every one of us, in a sense. Could, are we capable of such behavior? Are we capable of turning a blind eye to um, injustices around us? It, it, it's hard for me to believe that in, it, it, until David Grant's book, until this movie, uh, we didn't really know their story. We didn't know that they were some of the wealthiest people per capita in the world. We didn't know that the story that you're telling to the whole world was actually the founding of the FBI. That's right. And that's through really David Grant's book. That's a whole other aspect of it. I tried, Eric Roth and I tried in the script for the first two years to tell the story from that point of view. But we found that, you know, these guys come into town um, and uh, uh, they look around to see who did it. And as David Grant pointed out, it isn't a matter of who did it. It's a matter of who didn't do it. They all did it. Right. We're all complicit. Our thinking is complicit, our culture is complicit, our spirituality, quote unquote, is complicit in, in something like this. Um, and so it's important to just get it out there, talk about it, argue about it, see, live through it, you know? This was a reunion of sorts for De Niro and DiCaprio, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, they, their first film together was This Boy's Life, in which he played uh, DiCaprio's father. Uh, this is almost 20, I don't know how many years, 22 years ago, whatever. Uh, and it was one of, the, one of the few times that Robert uh, De Niro called me. We were talking about something else. And he said, hey, by the way, I've just worked in this film, um, This Boy's Life. And there's this kid, his young actor, he says, DiCaprio, his name is, you got to work with him someday. That was the first time he ever mentioned working with someone else to me. And here, um, it was almost like a family situation. The newcomer, of course, was Lily. In a sense, it was like a real family that we that we uh, um, we created, uh, and it, we had a head a head start because Leo and Bob already played family, and over the years we know each other so well. Uh, you can now watch the Apple original film *Killers of the Flower Moon* in theaters worldwide. It is extraordinary. Martin Scorsese, what an honor to have you with us today. Thank you so much. Great to speak to you.